Trying to get comfortable here. <sighs> Sorry, I was running like a few minutes late. And then when I try to get on here and just, it, it wasn't letting me. So I had to figure out why it wasn't letting me. And then so I could get on here. Um, so I hope that... Um, Hi, Glory K. Hi. She said, hi, Cynthia. Good to see you. Good to see you. Best Bible Facts. Hey, hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. I'm so glad you're here with me tonight. Looking forward to it. Um, I just was running like five minutes late, but then I had a problem getting on here. Seemed like uh, it wasn't showing me what I was doing. And then I said, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do that. So I'll get used to it sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. So how are you ladies doing this evening? How are you guys doing? Are you looking forward to the holiday? Um, I um wanted to come on here and do this when about um, seed starting mistakes. And I felt like that's something that, you know, if you're doing your own seeds, you run into different things that you're having problems with. And some of the pitfalls and some of the things that I've found that uh, when I'm starting my seeds could be a problem or whatever. Okay. So I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right in here and talk about it. And I want you to know you can jump in and anytime that you want to say something about um, the subject or whatever. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A like we usually do and talk about I open it up for just anything. OK, so when I want to start out, I want to say I want to give a shout out. Let's see. Did I miss anybody? OK, best Bible doing well, finally getting some warmer oh good for you warmer weather oh wonderful yes that's great I, I can't wait for mine to get there mine's all over the place we had one day with 79 you know i'm here in upstate new york zone 6 a and b i mean it was warm and and then it'll come and it'll not really a safe time to be taking a chance putting your stuff outside unless you want to lose stuff so anyway um, with the seed starting, uh, can you guys hear me okay? That's the first thing. See me okay and hear me okay. I want to make sure before I continue that uh, you're hearing me pretty good. I think you can hear me. All right. And you're seeing me pretty good. Okay, let's have our fingers crossed that I don't start that buffering and I don't start having those kind of problems like I had in the past because um seems like when I try to come on here, um, sometimes I do have that problem. Okay, but I want to do a shout out. And this shout out is to a new member to my channel. And uh, his name is Kenny Jackson. And I just want to thank him so much for becoming a member of this channel and supporting this channel and helping this channel continue to grow and be here for the future. And I really appreciate your support, okay? And I just wanted to give you a shout out. And um, it's so important to me and I don't take it for granted at all because you don't have to do that, okay? All right, so guys, let's um, go ahead and we're gonna... Um, Okay, she said yes. Okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah, so some of the common uh, seed starting mistakes, and I'm going to list some of them off, and then I'm going to um, talk about them a little bit, and then you can jump in and say anything that you want to say about it, and we'll just go from there and see how it goes, okay? And if you have like a question that you wanted to ask me, um, when we go to the end of the Q&A, um, if it's on something else, then we'll just go ahead and do the questions at the end. Okay. All right. 
So um, one of the main things, and I am guilty of this, planting too early. And if you haven't hit the thumbs up already, guys, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel out, and I appreciate it so much. Um, I have done this, planting too early. And so now I try to um, make sure that I don't do that. Now, sometimes with the weather could act crazy and you could be planting around the right time, but you just can't get your stuff out there. And that, that's not your fault. But um, for me, when I first started doing my own seeds, I was planting squash and cucumbers and all that stuff early. And I would have stuff flowering. <laughs> and it was flowers on it. I even had something that had a little fruit on it and I couldn't even put the stuff out. So I think that um, that's one thing. If you count your last frost date and then you count how many weeks before that that you're supposed to start something, I find that that's a pretty good guideline. Now, for me, in my situation, this time they said I was, was um, April 30th. And so I thought to myself, I'm not going to uh, do April 30th. So I just went into May and then counted from there with my seedlings. So my seedlings are kind of young and everything, but I figure I got plenty enough time, um, you know, to, to be able to put them out and not have a whole bunch of stuff in here flowering. or And then also not just flowering, your things can start to die, turn yellow, they become stressed when they need to get out of the container and get into your your uh, container outside or your beds or wherever you're going to put them at. So that's so important. And I find that um, I pay close attention to that. So that's, that's something to pay attention. Even if my stuff is kind of later going in, like I have some things now that I'm putting in a little bit later. Um, that's okay with me because I know I'm going to put it out anyway. You know, it's not going to run out of time. There are some things that you need to start inside if you have a short growing season like I do. You know, like say, for instance, I got different squash that I want to grow, the big ones. And um, they take a lot of uh, a long time. So. I would go ahead and uh, start those inside, but I got to time it just right because if you don't and you put it in early, those big squash and stuff, they're going to become stressed and they're going to get real big and stuff inside. So that is something to pay attention to. Pay attention to the particular plant. And if you know you've had an uh, experience, um, Betsy, hi, Miss Cynthia. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the chat. We're in here talking about seed starting mistakes. So you just jump right in if you want to, um, you know, contribute to this. And we're going to have the Q&A at the end. All right. So pay attention to that because that there can, can be a problem. If your plants become root bound, um, too big start get stressed, going to die on you, all that is just not worth all the trouble that, that you put in. You in, hello. Say, hello, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome to the chat. So, um, you know, pay attention to that. And you can look on the back of your envelopes and they'll tell you, plant this four to six weeks, whatever, before your last frost day. Then you can count back and do that. And, and what I do, sometimes packets don't say, I'll Google it. I'll Google it. I'll find out uh, what it says. I check a couple of different sources and make sure that they kind of close together so that I can figure out, okay, this, this is okay, um, this date, and I can go with this date. And then I write the dates on my envelope, on my seed envelope, I write on there, four to six weeks, how many days it takes. I kind of write it on there so I don't um I don't have to really be 
looking at that little print and trying to figure out this and that. I put it right on the front, big enough for me to see. <laughs> so that's something that uh, I found that is very helpful. And um, let's see if I mentioned everything about that that I wanted to talk about. Yes. Okay. The other thing is putting your plant on a, a windowsill. You can put your plant on a windowsill, but just know if it's not south facing, that plant's not going to get enough light. Hi, Lynette. She said, hi, Miss Cynthia. How are you? I'm late to the chat. That's okay. I was late to the chat too. I apologize. I had some problems getting on, but sooner or later, it's going to get better for me. So we're glad to see you here. And uh, we're talking about seed starting mistakes. So I know a lot of people put plants on the windowsill, but what I found because in the, um, I don't really have a lot of windowsills because of the kind of windows I have, but I do have some, but I don't really use the ones that I have for uh, putting a plant on because um, there may be a heat um, thing that have the heat register and I know that's going to be coming up on my plant and I don't like that. So um, I have a table in front of my big picture window. And when I have to like in my grow room and grow tent, when it get full in there, or I got to get stuff and move it out of there. I need another spot to put stuff in because I got so much. I put it on that table. Open them blinds up. Okay, water with, okay, water with weak chamomile tea if problems with seedlings rotting. Oh, okay. You tested that one out, huh? Hey, y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? So um, it anyway, so on the windowsill, I put it on the table. Open my blinds up. I got south facing. So, but still, I'll put a light over there. I I got I got all that light coming in from the window, but I'll sit me a little lamp over there and put me some light on it additional. I did that last year. I haven't had to do it this year yet. And it worked out perfectly. So I would say if you're going to do something like that, try to make sure your plant's getting enough light. And, and you can tell because if it starts like getting laggy, if your plant starts like turning yellow, if you see your plant looking like it's stressed, do something before you have a big problem. OK, so that's one thing uh, um, about uh, with the windowsill that I wanted to talk about. Here's a big problem, and I have to be careful with this, overwatering. You can overwater your plants. You can cause problems with overwatering, like different fungus or mold or rotting seeds and stuff like that. So if you have done that and you catch it in enough time, let that plant dry out. And I had this situation happen with me in here with my onions. And I have it in a, a little container that I had got from Dollar Tree. And I had put holes in the bottom of it. But for some reason, it wasn't draining good. And when I was watering it, um, it looked like they needed up water. And then when I looked and I lifted the thing up and I was looking, I saw water on the side of the uh, uh container in there by the dirt. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I immediately went, took and poured all that water out of there because this thing wasn't draining right. And I poured all of that out. And now I, I when I'm watering, I don't touch that plant. I do not get that plant any water. And that plant is doing well. And I'll tell you, um, that's something to pay attention to because sometimes even though you have drain holes or whatever in your thing, something may happen and maybe the thing isn't draining properly. So I don't know why that one wasn't draining properly, but after this is all over this season, I'm going to make those holes bigger and see if that'll alleviate the problem. Betsy, 
say, you're so right. A little too dry is what's better than a little too wet. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. And if it's too wet, you can quickly mess your plant up. So I was so glad that I caught that with those onions and got that water and dumped that water out. And now when I do water it, which I haven't watered it, I haven't touched it since then. And I and I just said, I'm going to let this plant dry out because my onions are coming up good and I don't want anything to happen to them. So that's one thing to be careful of. We want to nurture and take care of our plants, but this isn't outside. Sometimes outside, you know, you have a little bit more leeway out there. You outside, you got wind, you got sun, you got sun. But inside, if you start doing that, your plant can go mm, quick. Okay, so just keep that in mind and pay a close attention. And if you see it, take care of it. Let that plant dry out. Okay, let's see what we have here. UN, that's what I'm afraid of overwatering my plants. Yes, don't be afraid. I can stick my finger. I stick my finger there. I didn't do it with the onions because they got the whole thing full, filled, and, and there really wasn't any room. But if I can, and most of my plants I do, I just check that level and see if I think that this plant needs water or this plant doesn't need water. And if you're not sure, then just don't water it because you'll be on the safe side. And then as long as it's not seeds, you'll do better with plants not watering. You can get by a little bit, but don't let your seeds dry out, but don't soak them because if you do, they may rot on you. So it's it's kind of a delicate ba uh, balance. So just pay attention. Give it good water. Fill it. As long as that seed is moist. That's all. It ain't got to be soaked. Moist. And then you know, okay, it can germinate. And if you think they're not germinating, like for me in the beginning of the season, hey, y'all, hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up, people. Um, but in the beginning of the season, um, with my seedlings, I thought, oh, my goodness, I was so impatient. See, that's another thing. We're impatient gardeners. <laughs> I said, oh, my stuff's not coming up. My onion's not coming up. What's the problem? And I'm just thinking, oh, no, I don't, I, I, I don't see anything happening. And you know what I think was the situation? And if you are a northern gardener, and Chloe, I believe you are, um, my house is cool. So I had peppers. They like warm environments. Even though they was on a heating mat, I believe that the temperature in that room was not warm enough for them because they took a long time. And I know peppers normally take a long time, but it seemed like they were taking longer than normal. So I was thinking, uh-oh, all these bad seeds, something's wrong or whatever. But I was just impatient. Finally, we had got some warm temperatures. The house was a little bit more warmer. And then the next thing I know, they started coming up. And then in some cases, you have bad seeds. I did reseed certain things because I keep, oh, I keep seeds. And they, they were old. And with the prices going up on everything, I want to make sure that those seeds are uh, bad before I go to throwing them out. And uh, the last time we um, did this in, um, thank you. The last time we did this in um, our last uh, live, we talked about, um, somebody brought that up about how do you know when a seed is bad? And so the thing that um, I, I said, if you, the seed doesn't germinate and you reseed and it still don't germinate because I got something like that just happened and they were onion seeds and they were old. So I'm going to toss them out and get, I got some new onion seeds. I'm waiting on to get here because I want to plant different varieties. So, but you, they, uh person said you can uh, take your seeds and put them in water 
And then um, if the ones that flow to the top, those are the bad ones. So you can get rid of those. Now I have used that method before with tomato seeds. And, you know, when I was saving my tomato seeds and the ones that come up to the top, I get to get them out and throw them out because I know those are the bad ones and stuff like that. So um, sometimes when I can't think of everything at the time, uh, but if you guys know something, jump right in, jump right in. Doesn't bother me one bit. OK, we got seven people. Go ahead, people. Hit the thumbs up. Help the channel out. Um, so anyway, um, no, we are all impatient. So true, Betsy. So true. Emma, hi, everybody. Late to the party. That's all right. It's better late than never. We're so glad to have you here. Um, yes. Yeah, so with this seed starting thing, um, don't be discouraged. Um, you and don't be discouraged and don't be afraid to try because I'm sure everybody here has had things happen to them. And that's the thing about it is you grow, you grow from your mistakes and um, you find out as much information as you can. Lynette uh, Gaskin says, I'm guilty of destroying seeds from over watering. And so disappointing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm and I have to be careful of that too, Lynette, because I'm kind of heavy handed. And I heavy handed and thinking, oh yeah, I need to put a little bit more love. No, I have to tell myself, no, check that plant out and 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 put your finger down in there, touch that soil, and keep it. I try to keep track of when I water too. So, you know, like sometimes people say, pick the container up, you know how it feels when it's um, light like that, you you know it needs water or if it's heavy, you know that it, it, there's water in it. That helps if you are using seed starting mix. But if you watch my videos and you know how I use my two layer system with the seed starting mix on the top. And I'm going to go ahead and link that video for anybody who hasn't seen it. But for mine, my pots are automatically heavier. So that method doesn't work for me. But I think that that's a good, a good guide for if you plant your seeds in that way. OK, um, let's see what we have here. Chloe, I can't believe how short the viability period for onion. I know. I know, Chloe. I just had to throw away a pack of seeds, never even opened them because I had bought the seeds. And then I realized, oh, you got these are uh, like short day. You need long day. And so I didn't plant the seeds. But then I thought I'm going to plant the seeds anyway, because I'll get green onions. They were no good. So, I mean, brand new. And so I hate that. So that's the thing. And, and, and listen, everybody, if you're guilty of this too, I'm guilty of it. Buying seeds, I seem to want to buy extra. I don't want to buy one. I want to buy more than one just in case. And then, especially if you get a lot of seeds in one pack, which they are getting really skimpy on that now. Have y'all noticed they're getting skimpy on that? You know, like pepper seeds, you're only getting 30. Uh, certain seeds, you only, I went to one place, they're giving you 15 seeds. And I'm thinking, wow, 15 seeds, that's that's nothing. So, um, yeah, they're getting skimpy with these seeds. So um, be careful of buying extra seeds because then you'll have aging seeds. And you want to have a supply of seeds but try to rotate them out as much as you can in using them and putting the newer ones. That's what I'm starting to do now. Have the newer ones. I don't open that newer one. I open the older one. And um, I got a lot of flower seeds that are, I know are old and I love flowers and I want to put them out. I don't want to get rid of them. Let's see. Uh, Betsy. I have a pepper plant in my house plant. I thought they wouldn't sprout. So I put them in recycled the house plant dirt. 
now a year later, I have six inch pepper's pants. <laughs> Yes, yes, I can, I, I can believe that. Yeah, because they slow to start, and you put them in probably in some good, uh, healthy soil, and they just took off. Uh, best Bible facts. I have had a few germinated seedlings die. I just started over again. Okay, okay. So try to figure out why they died. You learn from your mistake. Try to figure out what happened. You in? I want to start my seeds in a paper cup. Is that okay? Yeah, you can start them in a paper cup. I have my seeds in the solo cup, uh, but if, if if I had paper cups, I could use a paper cup too. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can put them in. You can start them. You can start your seeds in any container where you can get some drainage. Um, you know, some people take a pot. You know, got an old pot or something. And, put some soil in there, start some seeds, go to Dollar Tree, buy some, some storage containers and do some seeds in there. You can grow, so you don't have to be in them little fancy little things that you buy. You can put your seeds in a lot of different things. And when you buy plants, if you happen to buy some plants, save those containers because you can take those containers, wash them out, disinfect them, and keep using them as long as they last. And I'm doing that. And I have some that I, I really love. And I hope they last a lot, a long time. Okay, guys, let me see if I'm missing somebody. Um, Best Bible facts. Okay, I read yours. Lynette, uh, use clay, unglazed pots. They help with overwatering. Pot sucks up a half of the water. Okay, yes. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Uh UN said yes. Um Chloe K, it's crazy how few seeds are included in a package. It sure is, Glory. It sure is. You could have something happen, or you could want to have plants, you know, succession planning. And then they're giving you these few little seeds. And so you don't have enough to do that. So I think that that is terrible, really. Um, Emma, I'm addicted to buying seeds. <laughs> I think we probably all can relate to that. I know I can. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to buying seeds. And I had said I was going to buy less seeds this time. And I went. And I had to buy seeds for uh, stuff that didn't come up. And of course, I added a few extra seeds. That's my problem. Instead of just buying the ones that you needed, I added to it. So we're, uh, we, that's part of being a, a gardener. We, we can't help that. We can't help it. But we just try to do the best we can so we don't just go too crazy with it. That's what I think. Uh, let's see. Betsy, she's talking to uh, you in. I've used cups before. I try a seed or two of each to make sure cups won't hurt them. Okay, good idea. Lynette Gaskin, Betsy, thank you for the tip. <laughs> I happen to have clay pots available. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Emma, cheaper than most addictions, sure is. And look at what you're getting from it. All that good food, because you sooner or later going to plant those seeds. And then I look at it like this. This is how I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what I want to say, but make myself feel better. As I say to myself, oh, yeah, but see, they didn't have those seeds anymore. So now you've got it. You've got it. So see, you did good by buying that extra one. <laughs> okay, people talking to each other. Okay, okay. So that's that's something that we all can relate to and um about the windowsill and about the windowsill um uh, you may need to add some additional light to that and pay attention to your plan. If it starts suffering, then go ahead, take actions and do something about it. Okay. Because for me, 
in my I had did the video of my uh grow room and I said I know I don't have enough light in there, but every year I add a little more light, a little more light. But you know, it's expensive having this stuff. So this year I bought two light fixtures and I already had one bulb. So I just got to buy one more bulb to go in the other fixture because my, my plants will get kind of leggy because there is not enough light. I need to have on my shelf. Uh, if you see my video, I have the fluorescent one and then I have the, the uh, clamp lights, two of those, one on this side, one on the other side of it. And what I need is another fluorescent on there. So what I do is I keep rotating and moving my plants around so that they can uh, get light. But it, well, what happens, I still get good harvest, okay? Let me see um, anything I'm missing, any questions or anything? UN, I saw a video where they use actual pieces of strawberries to grow more strawberries. Met the UN, you might, uh, UN, ours might not work. Strawberry seeds are sterilized. Yes, I, I think you, what you're saying, are you saying UN that they took an actual strawberry and planted it? Um, I don't know. It's something you could try. You could try because I know people take like celery and take that bottom part that you cut that celery off and they, they use the celery and then they take that part there where the roots would come out on their bottom part and they plant that thing and celery grows out of it, grows from it. So some things you can plant uh, the, the thing and uh, after you use part of it, and have it grow. I don't know about strawberries. I don't know if that would root. I've never heard of that. So I don't know. But that's something, you know, that, that's the thing about gardening. You can try stuff. Just try it and see, hey, does this really work? Or was this just somebody doing something? It doesn't hurt anything. So um, I would try it if I want to. I push the limits on everything. If I can. Okay. We talked about that one. And the other, one other thing is um, providing the right environment for your plant. Um, and, you know, you have to, we inside... One of the environments, you know, the plant going to need light. And um, so, you know, you want to do that. And like I said earlier, with my situation, when my peppers were slow to germinate because the room was too cold in there, even though they were on a heating mat. So, you know, it would have been ideal for me to add some supplemental heating or turn the heat up. But I didn't want to do that because the utility company is going up, up, up. So I said, hey, y'all peppers, y'all get together. Y'all be friends with each other. Warm up and help your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's something to think about, the right environment. So if you need to add some humidity, if you need to add some additional heat, if you need to add some additional lighting, you know, these things are, might be expensive. So, you know, according to your pocketbook, you know, what you're going to do. OK, so just keep that in mind of things you can do for your germination and for your plant life, you know, to keep it going. You know, because somebody in the chat said they had a seedling, it germinated, but then it died. So check, find out what happened, because there may be something into this one right here that I'm talking about, the right environment. Maybe, you know, it was like I talked about here, heat, humidity. It might be too cold in there. It might be too hot in there. It might not got enough water, whatever it is. So when you replant, you can find out, or oh, it could maybe soil, some soil 
disease or anything. So try to find out what that is so you can correct that so you can have success. Okay. All right. And this is another thing. We're inside. Unless you have a greenhouse. If you have a greenhouse, you're blessed. Uh, let's see what's going on. Any questions for me? Let's see. People talking. Okay, you in. Can I use a mini greenhouse out of plastic containers to keep plants? I think maybe you were saying warm, maybe. Um, growing my own. Hey, welcome to the chat. Say hello, host and chat. Yes, I'm Cynthia. Welcome. Uh, Betsy, ripe tomatoes work often squash left in compost grow even where freezing temps are. I'm just kind of reading y'all stuff here to see if there's a question here. Betsy, and the people speaking. Okay, okay. So now you're talking about the uh, UN. Can I use a mini greenhouse out of plastic containers to keep plants? I'm thinking you're saying warm. I don't see why not. Because it seems like that would be good. But it depends on the temperature too. Now, if you're talking like we're going to drop down into the 20s, uh, somebody was telling me at the store today, uh, overnight. So you got to, it depends on the temperature. Now, some, th some plastic things can work with certain temps, but when you get down into something, you know, like cold and freezing and you don't have any supplemental heating and that's an extended period of time that that happens, um, that might not be a good idea. But if the temperature is like it's spring and it's chilly at night or and it's not too bad and you want to put it, then that that's different. So it depends on the temperature and what exactly is happening because too cold, not a good idea. Okay, Betsy. Oh, Betsy says sure covers of plastic will protect from frost touching leaves to cover might freeze that leaf. Yeah, if it touches it. Yes, if it touches it. And um, I found that when I was trying to protect my stuff and I tried not to get in that situation, but sometimes you can't help it. The weather just too crazy. But I have like uh, burlap bags that I have had for years and I'll go out there and I really don't use plastic. And the only reason I don't use plastic, I don't have it. I use what I have. I have burlap bags. I'll go out there and put that burlap over my plants if I need to protect something. And I did have to do that. Uh, I think it was a year before last. Um, and also I have, I bought from Grower Solution. Um, something they call uh, uh, some kind of quilt. It's like this fabric that you put on stuff in the winter. Uh, you cover your stuff. I have that. I bought uh, quite a bit of that from them. So if I need to cover stuff, I can run out there and put that on, on, on stuff, which is designed. That's what it's made for. So you can buy that also at any of the big box stores and find that and use that also. Yeah, and I think, you know, for me, because I'm in upstate New York, uh, zone 6A and B, you know, that's, I think that's probably why I don't have the plastic uh, to throw on to stuff because I found the other stuff kind of worked better for me. But if I had, um, you know, maybe a, one of those, what do they call those grow tunnels or hoop houses or whatever they are, where you put the six mil pr plastic on it, well, in those situations, that will work in certain, like I said, certain temperatures. Because if it, you're talking about below zero or you're talking about, well, you don't have a heating 
even if you had heat and it was real cold for extended period of time, I'm not sure how, how well that will work. Uh, you know, because a lot of people in colder places don't try to grow through the winter. Uh, but one girl I did see who's doing something, she has a hotbed. And the hotbed heats the greenhouse and she's in a cold climate with snow and stuff. And she's harvesting food in the winter. So that might be something if people want to do that to check into that you can do um, to, to have food uh, around in the wintertime. And I think that that will work. To me, that sounds more natural, like it will work better than putting a heater. Because if I put a heater in there, you really got to monitor that because you could dry your plants out. You could give your plants too much heat. It, it, it could be kind of bad in a way, I think. But I don't know because I never have, have done it and I don't have a greenhouse. So anybody here that has that um, could, could um, you know, speak on that. Uh, let's see, Betsy. Oh, yeah, you're in upstate New York, too. Okay, all right, good. I think you told me that before. And you know what, y'all, if I don't remember, and you told me where you at uh, before, just count it, too. It, it, I, I, it, I can't hold on to everything. So sometimes I remember it, and sometimes I don't remember where you said you were. So if anybody, y'all just throw your zone in there, where you're at, whatever you're comfortable with, so that everybody in the chat can get an idea of where people are. That's very helpful. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, it's, it, did you say it? It stinks. Okay. So UN said, what is a hotbed? And then Emma said, she said, I had a hotbed a few years ago, but I think she said it stinks. Okay. You in, you in Texas. Okay. Um, a hotbed. Now, this isn't anything I've done any research on, but from what I can see, I'm I'm learning about it because it's very interesting to me. So I'm look, I got my eye on it. So um, it's like a raised bed that somebody has cre created. And from what I saw, what she did, she put like logs and stuff in there. You know how they do with that permaculture thing in there. Then she put uh, uh, peat moss, and uh, I think she put uh, peat moss, cow manure, some soil in there. And um, no, she didn't put any cow manure. She has animals. She has rabbits. She takes her rabbit cages and puts them on top of their raised bed and let them poop right in there. And they poop in the uh, in there. And it's the manure and all that stuff that makes the heat. And you could watch her and she you could see the heat coming off of the thing. You could actually, you know how you can see heat? And I know you in Texas, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I, I went to uh, Arizona one time and I could actually see the heat. And um, so I think that um, that's that's what I know about it right now. And uh, and it generates this heat and it's a constant heat. It's not like um, it's going to not uh, once it heats up. It's working. It stays like that. So. That's that's what I said, because I'm watching that because I want to, uh, you know, I can't do everything in the world, but I just looking at it because I keep my eye on certain things because I'd be thinking to myself, hmm, that looking pretty good to me. You know, if I had a greenhouse, I'm here in the cold, she's in the cold, I could put get me a hot bed in there, I could be harvesting food in there, um, and uh, you can use that thing year round. Because in the summertime, I think what she does, I'm not sure on this, but it's covered because she has it covered with a, um, you know, like that six mil plastic that you put over your greenhouse or whatever. And uh, or whatever you call them, rope, I don't know what you call them. Uh, if they green, you call them greenhouses or whatever. But she has that covered. But in the summertime, she takes that off. And I believe in the summertime, she's still growing in there and covers it up for the winter. Okay, so we get some zones in here. 
Betsy, a hot bed is when the dirt is heated some way and bed is covered. Uh Uh-huh, exactly. Emma, a pile of manure in greenhouse and sit seed trays and plants on top and it radiates. Oh, and you said you had it, Emma, uh, uh, Emma. So you've had experience with it. Um, Growing my own. I'm in Canada. Oh, you're in Canada, 6B. And the weather is playing game. Oh, yeah, everywhere. Uh, it is. It is. Lynette, North Carolina. Hi, Zone AA. Yeah, I have a good friend in North Carolina. Betsy, old style hot beds were heated by rotting manure. That probably is why it stunk. Mm hmm. Because all of them have some kind of manure in it, so I imagine they do they do smell, but I don't know. I don't know. I think that girl saying hers didn't smell, but I don't. I don't hold me to that. Uh, Emma, very effective, but wow. Okay, you in? It sounds like a compost pile. Yes, but it's much hotter. A compost pile will get to like a, a certain temperature, but this this hot bed, from what I could see, it's much hotter because if you can have that in the winter, in below zero weather, and that place is where you can go in there and that thing is warm in there. I don't think a, a um, I don't know. I I I'm not gonna speak on the the compost pile, but it is similar to that. I I imagine, but I just just seems like to me it's hotter. Uh, but Emma knows because she's had it. And Emma, you're in Scotland. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. How's your weather over there in Scotland? Um, Betsy, she's growing, growing wild. You're further north than I am in warmer zone. Okay. Um, yes, best Bible facts, Illinois. I remember that 5B. My home state, um, Betsy, you can grow all winter in cold frame with cold frame inside. With a cold frame inside. Mm. You mean inside your house? Now, let me know what you mean by that. Because I don't know. I know that a cold frame here outside I think it would freeze in the below zero weather. So inside, when you say inside, I'm not sure. Uh, I would like to mo- know more about that, Betsy. Um, Miss Cynthia, some people are heating their plastic greenhouse with compost piles at least warm enough for kale, greens, uh, coals, crops, etc. Okay, compost. And what is it? The compost pile, uh, just regular compost piles. Okay, that is good to know. I have to check into that. Okay, Betsy said no cold frame inside greenhouse tunnel. Okay, okay. All right, so let me go back up and see what you said about it. Okay, you okay, that's about the compost pals. All right, all right. So, see, there's all these different ways that you can do stuff, but you have to do your homework, you have to find out about it, and 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 so you can do it right and be successful with it. Because if you can grow food year round, and and especially in a cold climate like mine, uh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. I like that. So what I was talking about, this one on here was too much heat. So we talked about that because we got onto these heat things that we're talking about. Um, but uh, these, you know, brought out all this information when I talked about this here. So 
those are the things that I wanted to talk about with the um, mistakes. So we can all be successful and grow on our food and not have to use up a lot of seeds, particularly when these people, some places giving you 15 seeds, which I think is ridiculous. Um, and if you can go to the Dollar Tree or wherever, those seeds are good. Those are good seeds. You may not get a whole bunch in there, but I think you get more than 15 seeds for a dollar twenty-five here. You know, so check it out. You see some places you paying for the packaging. They got a big pretty outside package that you love to see, and they have it looks so gorgeous and everything. Well, maybe some places don't have all that. Um let me get a drink over here. My voice is getting dry. I have tea. I'm a tea drinker. <laughs> okay, guys. So I'm opening up the chat. Go for it. What you want to talk about? Questions? Sharing something? Ooh, some seed packets have five seeds. No kidding. Oh, my goodness. That's unbelievable. And I bet you they're trying to charge you the full price. That's a shame. Okay, best Bible facts. When is the best time to uppot your seedlings from the trays? Well, I try not to do a lot of up potting. The only thing I really up have, have had I, for my system, my two layer system, last year I just up potted my tomatoes. And what I did when I up potted the tomatoes, my tomato seedlings, I let them get pretty big. They had gotten pretty big until I said, okay, they look like they ready to get out of here. So, but I had used my two-layer system, y'all. You know what I'm talking about when I said my two-layer system. If you don't, I'm going to link that video. But how I do it. So they had nutrition. So if you're using the system that I have, they're getting nutrition. But if you're not and you're using just regular uh, seed starting mix, well, when they get their true leaves, you got to get them out of that. You got to up pop those because they need nutrition. So that's something to um, to do, you know. So y'all, um, anybody want to jump in there on that uh, experience? Because I do mine a whole different way. Uh, let's see what else. Emma, weather here is getting better. Mostly... Uh, 10 degrees Celsius plus, okay, during the day now, and got to watch the night lows, okay. Okay, so they're not uh, get carried away. <laughs> you in, I didn't know that Dollar Tree sold seeds. Oh, yes, they do. You get four packs of seeds for a dollar. I buy. I had. I go there first. I go there first, and and when they put them seeds out, I be waiting on them. And I tell you, something another place is Dollar General. I don't know if you have a Dollar General, but Dollar General will also sell seeds, but they don't sell them as cheap as Dollar Tree does. Um, I can't remember what it is there, but I know what Dollar Tree is for. They're actually 25 cents a pack at Dollar Tree. So you don't have to buy four if you're you just going to pay 25 cents. So, um, yeah. So, oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, so we got that. Yeah, so now you know that. Check it out. Check it out. Elwanda, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. Betsy. She giving her her advice on how she uh, knows when to up pot. So there you go. There's another answer. Betsy. 
Everybody speaking. Emma said, yes. Once true leaves appear, like you say, yes. Elwanda. People saying, hi. You in Dollar Tree seeds work pretty well. Yes, they do. It's the same seeds in a different packet. As a matter of fact, when I buy Dollar Tree seeds, I get good germination. And I have bought some seeds from big companies and had poor germination. They're good. Now, if they get old, I, the only problem I ever had with them, if, if if I had seeds and I let them, kept them too, and what I'm talking about, three or four years, and then maybe I didn't get 100% germination, but they were still germinating. So for 25 cent a pack, yeah, they don't have everything. They don't have specialty things, but they got your basic things that you want to grow. Like they got certain tomatoes. Uh, they have peppers. They have uh, your cold crop brassicas. Like they don't have collard greens, at least here where I live. They don't have collard greens and stuff like that, but they have cabbage and lettuce and different things like that you're going to want to grow. It, it, it's worth it. You'll see me if I show it my seeds. Sometimes you'll see me holding up that seed thing that I got from them seeds from Dollar Tree and I'm planting them. Oh, yeah. There's no shame in that. <laughs> no shame at all. Okay, so Betsy said, you in, some will regrow and most won't. Okay, I missed that. I'll catch that later. Oh, Emma said, I'm overpaying for fancy seed packages. A seed is a seed, surely. That's the absolute truth. And I learned that when I first bought the Dollar Tree Seeds, I thought these are not going to be any good. And then I found out, ooh, these are good seeds. And I also found out this is the same uh, variety. It ain't some weird variety. It's a it's a main variety that I go to the other companies and pay a whole bunch for. Now, you don't get as many, but the other companies, they starting to skimp on the seeds now. So... All that stuff is sort of leveling out. Oh, Betsy says some Dollar Tree seeds are organic. All are non-GMO. Okay, I didn't know that. Yes, and the flower seeds. They have the flower seeds. They have um, bulbs, little flower bulbs. They're not the great big bulbs. I'm trying to think of what kind of flower bulbs. Anybody can remember? It's some kind of little bulbs because I bought some last year and then didn't even get a chance to plant them. But uh, they have little little flower that you grow. Oh, oh, what do you call a big spiky plant? Gladiolas. They have the gladiola little bulbs, the smaller ones. And uh, yeah, those things are good. Those things grow. I've seen people growing them. Glory K. I have started buying multiple packets of seeds because a lot of non-hybrid varieties are less available. I'm also seeing that some seeds are not available because the websites are saying crop failure. Oh, well, I'm starting to have some ideas about some of that, what you're saying. And I'm thinking some of that is deliberate. At least that's what's in my mind because I'm thinking uh, when I'm looking at these seeds, and I'm looking for a certain thing that's an heirloom or, or open pollinated so I can save my seeds, but then y'all don't have that. 
and you're not selling too many of them, but you're pushing this other stuff so that you can get me keep on coming back and have to buy seeds. I don't like that because the whole point of being a gardener is I want to be more self-sufficient as much as I can be. So that means I want to be able to save my seeds. And then some seeds that are, are hybrid seed, I'm going to plant them anyway and see what I get. <laughs> Has anybody had any any luck with that? Because I saw a, a gardener and he, he has, a, I think it was a pepper seed. And he said it's a hybrid and he planted the hybrid and he said the hybrid was better than the original. So he said he's he he growing the, he, he saved those seeds and he's growing them and continuously growing them. So you never know because I have a certain melon and I grew it and it's a hybrid. I'm going to grow that seed and I'm going to see what I get because the original was very good. I'm going to see what I get is and then if I you might you might you might end up creating something something new and it becomes stable. The tiger store where I live, I get a pack for a dollar twenty. Okay, and you can mix and match. Oh, that's nice. You can do that at Dollar Tree too. You can mix and match. Emma, did you discuss damping off? I came in late, so maybe I missed it. No, I didn't discuss damping off. But what I did discuss was things of. I'm going to talk about damping off in a minute. I talked about planning too early, starting on a windowsill, overwatering with big one, not providing the right environment, and too much heat indoors. Now, damping off from what I know, because I don't have a problem with that, thank God. Because, you know, I take how I do my two-layer system, and I put my, my seed and star mix in the oven to kill all that stuff in there. I don't have the damping off problem. But from what I know, it's in the soil, and it can make your seedlings um, die. And that's why I was asking whoever that was that had the problem is the seedling coming up and then dying. So I was telling to try to find out what was going on with that seedling so you can know not to repeat that problem. OK, because it could be multiple things. Uh, so anybody here had the problem with damping off that you you could share your experience with it? I don't have that problem. Oh, you say, oh, okay, Best Bible. You had good luck with uh, gladiolas, and they're so beautiful. Betsy, anyone, any uh, anonymity bulb can spell it. I got uh, gladiolas and Dollar Tree, and I can't say about quality. I gave them away. Okay, okay. I still have mine in the garage. I don't know if they're any good. I'm going to see. I'm going to plant them. Because I bought them and I just didn't have time. Glory K, some hybrids come from two good varieties. Yes. That's why I believe if you plant it, you never know what you get. You may really get something better than, than the, the one you got the seeds from. So I'm going to try it. Okay, she said, uh, sorry, four pack for a dollar twenty nine. Okay. Okay, Emma says you sterilize your compost too, so avoids the fungus killing her precious seeds. That's right. Absolutely. That's what I do. Yes. Because when you're trying to germinate a seed, you're trying to germinate a seed. You're not trying to feed it right there. So on the top, I make sure I have what it needs for germination. On the bottom, 
you're getting your nutrition. And I can't stand them fungus gnats. Anybody uh, having a problem with fun fungus gnats this time? If you are, let me know in the chat. I have none. Zero fungus gnats. Okay, Emma. Uh, glory my own. I had a problem with damping off last year, but I learned my lesson doing better this year. Okay, okay. What did you do better though? I'm curious. Other people may have had a problem. What did you do? Glory K, one company I buy from is dehybridizing some varieties. Okay. Betsy growing. How did you fix it? Okay, she's asking. So share that information because see some people may have the problem and they want to know what did you do? Because it's best if somebody had that problem and they can tell you exactly what they did will help you because that's experience. That's experience, and I believe in that. So does anybody have any questions for me? Any comments that you want to share in the chat? Um, Emma, I'm a big advocate for a nice layer of vermiculite over seeds in place of soil. Okay, okay, that sounds like that'll work. Betsy, Miss Cynthia, how long have you been gardening? Over 20 years. Over 20 years. And as I shared in the last uh, live, when somebody had asked me about my first gardening experience, and I had uh, had to think about that because what I had been saying was my first gardening experience. I, I rethought about that. I said, hey, wait a minute. Was in elementary school where well, we grew a bean. <laughs> that was my first one. And I remembered how much I loved that. We took a teacher gave you a little milk card. You cut the top off of the milk card. She gave us a little soil. We put it in there. She gave us beans. You planted your little bean in there. And uh, we put them on the windowsill all with our little label and our name on it and watered them and took care of them. And mine grew. And I, oh, I ran home. I ran home. Oh, look, I grew a bean. I grew a bean. I was so happy about growing that bean. And, you know, it teaches Children, and I think, uh, uh, you know, children need to learn that today because a lot of children, when you ask them, where did uh, something come from? You know, because I had one of my granddaughters, she, I said, well, I'm thinking about getting rabbits and I might be butchering rabbits. Oh, she's like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. And so some people, they, they think the grocery store, the little package thing that they give you, that's the, where the food come from. They don't realize Something had to die. Something had to grow. All these things had to happen for this food to come about that you're getting in that grocery store. So I think that, uh, you know, that's something when I talk about what we've lost, you know, we've lost a lot and our children have lost a lot and they don't realize the bare necessities of life and how life, the circle of life. And so realizing that, and that that's not horrible. That's not horrible at all. That is how people eat. And we need food to survive. Let's see. Best Bible facts. I do. I put out a vinegar solution in bowls to catch the I wish I would have done your process. Okay. So I think I'm missing some best Bible facts. I don't, I don't, maybe that's not for me. Uh, Lynette Gaskin, I'm waiting now for herb seeds and flower seeds from Dollar Tree to germinate. 
I love the price. I go overboard. I purchase so many. I know it's so easy. But the good thing about it is, to me, they seem to keep pretty good. Dollar Tree, because you know how we talked about onion seeds not uh, lasting very long? But I found that those bunching onion seeds that uh, you get from Dollar Tree, I have some old ones of those, and they still germinating. So uh, I think they really have good seeds there. I really, really do. That's been my experience. Oh, you in? Uh, how do you check for soil pH? Well, you get a soil kit, and you can check your soil. Um, you can use your cooperative extension. Every uh, county should have it, and uh, you can take your soil to them, and they'll do uh, a soil test for you. Or you can go and buy a kit. I've never done it, but I see the kits in there when I go picking up my supplies. And then you do your follow the directions and test your soil from different areas, depending on what you're growing in. See, for me, the reason I'm in a pot, I have a container garden. So for me, I can't really do that unless I'm trying to, like with my blueberries, I know they need a certain kind of soil and I have them in there. So maybe I want to know well, what is the soil in this container good for these blueberries or not? Then I might want to check that. But overall, I would have to be checking all my different containers. So I haven't really done that. But I am going to be checking on my blueberries because I want to make sure they're getting what they need so I can be successful with that. Okay, so you can go with your cooperative extension or you can purchase a kit and follow the directions. You can call your local cooperative extension. They have master gardeners there. They have a wealth of knowledge and they can tell you different things when you have questions about things and they can help you uh, and they're in your area. That's what's good about it because this is advice coming from growers in your area. So I highly recommend it. I do use the cooperative extension. I have called them many occasions. Oh, 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 Chloe K. You thinking about rabbits? Uh huh. Oh, Cynthia K. Thinking about rabbits. I'm thinking about them. Yes. And uh, you thinking about them? Yes. I've watched videos on it and stuff like that. I can't really go into detail on here because we're not supposed to be talking about certain things. But uh, I watch certain videos of how to do what you need to do and uh, for me. And I know when uh, when I was a kid, my mother used to cook rabbit. And I remember uh, it was very good. You have to, uh, she used to make it with uh, smothering it with uh, gravy. And it was, you know, she knew how to make it tender and stuff like that. So I remember it was very good. And people always say stuff tastes like chicken, but it did. <laughs> it tastes like chicken. <laughs> okay. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. Doesn't hurt a thing. Uh, let's see. Uh Anybody else here thinking about livestock or rabbits or something, chickens, or do you have them? I know somebody in here said they had chickens last time and goats and some, oh, you in. I think, was that you that said you had the animals? Let's see. I was referring to, oh, okay. This Bible facts. I was referring to fungus gnats. Next time I plan to do the process that you do, avoid getting them. Someone told me I could have, there was a, a young lady who told me she had tried many of those, uh, those methods. She hadn't tried mine yet, but she said those other methods, she had fungus gnats. So uh, she said that she was very frustrated with it. And I had said to her, well, go ahead and try my method. Um, I would not tell you, um, to do something that I haven't done myself as far as that fungus net goes, because 
when I planted this time, I said, I'm just looking. I'm going to see anything fail. If I got any, I don't have any. Because that's one thing I couldn't live with. I can't stand them in my house. And plus, they do damage to your plant roots. Growing my own, I just monitor how I water, stick my finger in the soil to make sure the soil's dry before I water and don't put too much water. Absolutely. That's what I was saying earlier about putting my finger in there. Yes, that's that's one of the best ways to check. That's one of the best ways to check. Don't just look at it and say, oh, it needs water because that can really mess your plan up. Betsy, soil pH is tested with low-cost kit. Uh-huh. Directions on homemade tests are around here and there. Yes, that's true. That's a good thing. That's a good thing to point out. Betsy, I'm thinking about raising rabbits. Oh, yeah, good for you. I know I am. First of all, the manure. If I get a hot bed, I can use them rabbits. Also, you can use that rabbit manure straight from the rabbit into your garden. You don't have to wait. It doesn't burn or damage. And I see some people, they swear by that rabbit manure. Uh, one gardener I saw, every time she plants up, she got her little rabbit manure. She puts that in there. Then she plants her thing in there. And they grow many, many vegetables. So it's it's a good thing. It's, it's a multi-purpose thing. And then you can also, if you want to, have them for, you know, food. Uh, you know, so uh, as we look to the future and as things continue to rise and prices going up, you know, that might be an option for people to have because even if you didn't eat it yourself, if say, for instance, you don't like rabbit, you can breed them because people are buying these things and they are are, are using them for uh, breeding or food or whatever, you know. And so there's good there's money in that to be made. And that's a way of, of making an income. And that, those things like that can be very important for future, you know, sustainability. Uh, Emma said, I, I can't kill, but it's definitely, definitely eat it. Yes, that was the part for me that, that was difficult. It was difficult for me to watch it. It was difficult for me to think about doing that. And so uh, that's nothing I would take joy in, but that is something that uh, I think that we would... Uh, I see people pray and do different things. I think I would do that, you know, you know, because we, and, and I do that with my garden. I pray over my garden, you know, that God would bless my garden, you know, and that, it, that, uh, that the Lord would guide me, guide the gardeners, guide the gardeners hands and abilities and what you're doing and all that. So that you can have a, a bumper crops, <laughs> oh, L one. Okay, that was you. Okay, uh huh. I remember now. Yes, Corey K. Off topic. On your community page, you asked about costs paid for potato seeds. My position: If your potatoes save for next year. And got good stock, a okay. I had potatoes last year. My potatoes, uh, I had Yukon Gold, and I still have. Oh, I don't know if people saw that in the video. I was showing all the uh, potatoes I have in the basement chitting. Uh, I went to the store and I bought these like red potatoes, and they just started chitting. They're going crazy, chitting all over the place. So I got these chits all over. So I'm just like, oh, I'm, I hope I can get this stuff in the ground. So um, then the ones that were mine, I ate the bigger ones. And so I still have smaller ones, but they're chitting also. So I'm going to be 
uh, planting those. I'm going to be planting quite a bit of uh, potatoes, hopefully. And so I bought the uh, ones from the Urban Farmer, which I've never purchased from them before, but they're certified potatoes. And I thought it would be nice for me to get the stock of the certified potato and have that be a repeat year after year in my garden. So that was what I got. Uh, and I knew I was going to pay a little bit more for them because they were certified, but I don't know. And what that means, in case somebody doesn't know, it's supposed to mean that they're free, they're free of diseases and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, because you know you can bring that stuff into your garden, which I talked about in the last slide. You can bring stuff into your garden, harmful things, and then have a problem with all this stuff taking off, you know. Um, so I, I was just wondering, was that a good price for those or not? But in the long run, I think it's a good price. And you know what? Uh, I went to the garden center today because they opened up my favorite garden centers open for the season now. They don't have their stuff off to plant because it's way too early for us to plant. But what they had was an onion set. And remember, I don't know if anybody remembers, but last time I said I was going to go as soon as they opened and I was going to get my, not the sets, the onion plants. So I got some two bunches of the Walla Walla onions, which can grow here. And uh, they had another one, uh, ringmaster onion there and uh i asked her did she have the shallots and she said no she didn't have the shallots because she must have put her order in too late because they were sold out and she guessed where they got the onions from dixondale <laughs> so i got they were 4.99 a bunch 4.99 a bunch so i'm glad i have them as soon as i can I'm going to put them outside and plant them because this year I'm thinking I'm going to have a lot of onions and uh, not just uh, to store. Some going to be for storage, but some going to be for different dishes or things I want to try with them and maybe some onion powder, just different things I want to try with the onions. So I was happy to go and get those that I wanted to be one of the first people to get in there and get them because here it just seems like these people, these stores don't buy enough. They haven't adjusted to the fact that gardening is through the roof and everybody's doing it. And they haven't adjusted to the fact that they need to get more inventory. So they're always out of stuff if you don't get right in there. Okay, let me see if uh, I can move up here because I think I missed some stuff. Okay, Betsy said she's thinking about raising quail, but two birds for one meal is hard to accept. Yeah, they're very small. I, I don't, I think that would be to me ideal for somebody that you really don't have the space and you don't have the option of maybe doing like chickens or something, rabbits or something like that, that maybe you have some kind of place where you can do them and they're small and maybe that would be manageable for you. Because what I'm thinking about is when people prices are so high that you just can't even afford meat that that might be something. Some protein is better than no protein. So, um, you know, that's the way I look at it is an option in certain situations might be good. Okay. I'm just trying to see if I did miss some of y'all's uh, things that you said. I don't want to um, anybody to think I'd, I just might have missed it, but I didn't do it deliberately. Okay. Best Bible facts. What do you know about mushroom compost? 
nothing. Nothing. I see it. I see people saying you can use mushroom compost. And I guess when the peat moss is gone, I'm going to be trying all this stuff that I don't know anything about. I have used cow manure for years and years, and it works beautifully for me. And uh, as long as I don't see them going downhill in that area, I will continue to use that. But I have nothing against mushroom compost. But I was, I just read something on that, but I now it's slipping my mind. But I know I read something about mushroom compost. And, uh, but some of these questions that y'all asking me when I do the next live, I will be addressing them. If there's something that I don't know, when I do another live, I'll be talking about it. So, I don't know about the mushroom compost. I've never used it, but a lot of people use it and they growing good food, I guess. You know, I'm, you know me, I'm big on soil life. I want life in my containers. So it's life in my food. So life goes into me. So I don't want to use anything that's dead. That's not going to give my soil any good uh, it's not just a matter of just fertilizing, fertilizing from, for the plant. Life is for the soil. So, you know, that is uh, what I'm focusing on doing. So I try to make sure if I'm going to use something that it's going to do that. And um, as our choices go away, then we're going to have to adjust and adapt to new things. So that mushroom compost may be something I'll be using in the future, you know? Container gardening is the way to go for me. That's Lynette. Uh, I don't have the best back. And I can create a beautiful space, calm and serene, stress relieving while trying to grow food, still learning. I like that. I like that. That's wonderful. That's why I'm doing container gardening because of back and other issues. So, uh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, you can grow some big time food in some containers. People have no idea. Just look at my harvest. Okay, growing my own. I also have potatoes from last year chitting in my cold frame. Okay, okay. I don't have a cold frame. I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I just never do. I have them in my basement, and they are chitting. Oh, my goodness. And I keep saying I'm going to go down there and cut some of the things off down low because the chitting is going, whoa. I mean, I mean, I got serious chitting going on. So uh, I don't know by the time I can plant them. Is it going to, they going to be no good? I don't know. So the backup plan is those certified potatoes that I just got. I got five pounds of those and it's a different, it's not a Yukon Gold. It's a different potato. I can't think of the name of it right now. But the description and the way they describe the taste, I said, oh, I have to try these potatoes. And I went down the basement and looked at them the other day. And they uh, they already, you can see the little eyes on them. If you looked at my, pit, my post that I put up there, you can see the eyes. But now they're more pronounced. So it's starting to, to, to get there. So I figure by the time I can plant outside, they'll have pretty good chitting on them. So I figure either way, I'm going to have some good potatoes because I'm going to plant the red ones from the store that are chitting all over the place. I'm also going to plant my ones from last year, and then I'm going to plant these ones that I got. And I'm going to keep these ones separate so I can know these when I save them. These are my certified potato because I'm going to see how they work out for me. Uh, let's see. Growing my own, I also have potatoes. Okay. And then Chloe K, I love your gardening center. Oh, okay. Yes. 
I started to shoot a video over there today. I went in there and I said, if I see, uh, if it looks like I want to shoot a video today, I'll shoot a video in here because this is my favorite little garden center. And I did do a uh, a video on that from last time. Uh, well, a few years ago. And uh, But when I went in there, you know, they just getting set up because we're not in the prime gardening time right now. So they just getting set up. So I said, I'm going to wait until it's all beautiful and everything is out. You know, that's when I want to do the video in there. And uh, I just love walking through that place and looking at everything. I think it's uh, it's a nice place. It's a little family owned gardening center. And uh, I just like it. Betsy in PA. I wouldn't use mushroom compost because it contains formaldehyde ooh, and can uh, embalming fluid. Wow. That's why I say read the label. Find out what stuff is, is made out of. Don't just go in there buying a bag because they're selling it in the store. And you know, I stress that over and over and over. We got to do our homework. Don't just go getting this stuff. And if you grow a dead food in your container, that's not going to help you. Maybe right now, because we have grocery stores, you still getting stuff from the grocery store. So you get nutrients and stuff, some nutrients and stuff from the grocery store. But if push come to shove and there is no grocery store that you can get it from and you're going to be growing it, you better have life in that stuff because you're going to need that nutrition from that food. It's going to be critical. OK, you don't want to be growing dead food. And I don't mean physically dead. I mean nutritionally dead. And Wanda, I want, I went to Lowe's yesterday and saw peat moss at $23. I thought something a few months ago for eighteen dollars. However, I'm going to go get that twenty three dollars <laughs> next. You better, you better, girl. I'm telling you because these prices. What can you do about it? But if you find in the peat moss, because I had talked in a video about one. Uh, was it last season? I think it was last season that I was running all over trying to get peat moss, and nobody had it. And so then I found my little garden center that I love. They had plenty of it. So I got it. And I still have a big thing of it now because I bought extra. That's my thing. I try to buy extra if I can afford it any kind of way because I don't want to be running around looking for stuff when I need it. And if you're trying to make your own soil, which I have gotten into and I use peat moss, I need it. So I have that big one. And I opened it, but I didn't take much out of it. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to get more and have it for this season. And I was looking at a bone meal. And I told y'all I use peat moss, cow manure, and bone meal. Those I'm always using. So I saw a big old bag when I was in the, the garden center of bone meal. And I said, let me see how much this, and I don't know how many pounds it was. It was like a bag like this, maybe. I'm saying it was over 10 pounds, I believe, but $34. I was like, whoo, wow. I was looking at, I was just walking around. I didn't buy the stuff today. I was basically looking to see what do you guys have? What is the pricing on it? Because, uh, you know, I'm going to need to supplement some of the things I have. I have a lot of stuff. Um, like one time somebody had asked me and I had put it in the comment because I forgot to mention this because he asked me, what did I fertilize with? And I talked about my weed fertilizer. Yes, I do. But I have forgot to mention that I've used the fish emulsion also. 
So I put it down in my comment on that video that I forgot to you to say that, that I use fish emulsion also. So I added that in there because I don't want you to, to think that uh, I was being dishonest or something like that. I just had not uh, forgot about it. So uh, that's what I use. And I was looking at all the chemical stuff that they had in there. And there would have been a time that I'd have been buying chemicals to put on my stuff for bugs. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to. If I get some kind of infestation or something, that will be the last thing that I do. And I don't know when we was in here talking about it, people were talking about woodpeckers last time. And people said they hate the woodpecker, the woodpeckers peck on your house. The woodpecker made Swiss cheese out of their trees and all that. So I was thinking about that after the uh, the live and thinking about my woodpeckers because I said I like the woodpeckers. My woodpeckers, I have trees all around. I don't know if they're pecking on the trees or not. I don't see the woodpecker pecking on the trees. You know where I see the woodpecker pecking? In the ground. He's getting the bugs in the ground. That woodpecker will be there just getting them and getting them and getting them. And the, so for me, ticks, I already found two last year. Not on me, but in, out there because I have a neighbor that's not cutting their grass down good. And that's where ticks hide it in brush and stuff like that. So birds in my garden they are eating these bugs. That's why I say, put you some water out there. Put you some bird baths out there for these birds to get some water. Because they say when they peck your stuff and your tomatoes and stuff, they're trying to get moisture, water. So put that water out there. I'm sure they're going to mess with something in your garden, but I haven't found it to be any kind of problem of any big thing that they've done. The big thing that I have a problem with is the squirrel. The squirrel is my major problem right now. I went out there this time, you know, last time I talked about the squirrel and putting the tool down and all that and how that's working for me now. Well, this squirrel, I told you they're smart. This squirrel is hungry. They hungry. And they want to try to test stuff. So now the tool was on my uh, hazelnut tree. I had the tool on it. But through the winter, the tool sort of was wearing out. Most of the hazelnut all around, it's like the stem here, and I got the tool all around that and clothespins under there attaching it. Well, the squirrel must have been watching because that hazelnut got a little hole in that tool. And that it, it was a hole in there. That squirrel went in my pot with my hazelnut tree in there and I tell you, man, it was a whole way down in there. I think it's eating the roots of my tree. I think it is eating the roots of my tree. Now, if I hadn't have went out there checking, that's why I say keep paying attention to your garden. And we dropping down into the 20s. And that big old hole and my roots, tree roots are uh, exposed with all this go air and moisture temperature going in there. That could kill my tree. And eating the roots, number one, could kill it. And then number two, the roots being exposed to the elements. So I went and pushed dirt and got dirt back in there and covered that back up. And I also uh, took and got my buddy out. The rat trap. Put that rat trap in that pot right where it was digging. And I went through and checked all my other trees. And if I, and guess what? Those rat traps were popped. So when it popped the, tra the traps, it ran away, but it didn't do anything. But if I had to set them traps back, probably would have. So I went back and set all my traps, set them. Because the squirrel 
if I put my trees, that's what I want to try to do this year is get my trees in the ground because the squirrel's not going to dig in the, in the ground. The squirrel don't want to dig in the ground. They want to dig in my pot. They want to dig in the pot because it's that nice fluffy dirt. And look at it here. This is easy. You go to the ground. You got to work hard to get there. They lazy and they are greedy. <laughs> I don't like them, y'all. I don't like them. Okay, let's see. Regarding potatoes, take long growth off potatoes and plant those whole. Get much better yields. Okay, plant the potato whole. Yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing because you guess I got a lot of potatoes now because I ordered five pounds of the certified. And when they came, I thought to myself, ooh, where are you going to put all these potatoes? You know, because you don't want to put too many in a pot. If you put too many in a pot, you just hindering uh, your yield. So um, I said, if I get some of my trees in the ground, I'll have them big 17 gallon uh, containers available and I can be able to plant in those also. So I wanted to try to do that. And I'm hoping that the weather could works okay for me because if it goes right into the don't have any spring, but jump right into summer. It's going to be so. And when it jumps in the summer, like it did last year, it jumped into hot summer with humidity. And when it's like that, I can't go out there and be digging no holes in that. It, it's just too much on me. It's too much. So uh, I got some uh, plans about, I'm going to tell y'all everything I'm going to do, but I got some plans about some stuff that should make some interesting uh, videos, uh, uh, what I'm going to do out there. Betsy, supplies get expensive every year at this time. They sure do. Betsy, Miss Cynthia, do you have uh, runnings near you more like uh, farmer supply and cheaper garden stuff? Yes, we do. We have, a, 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 it's a little, a little away from me, but I, it's not that far. And uh, there's a runnings. I've never been in there, but I know because I asked uh, somebody one time, what is this store? And the little town I was in, and they were telling me about the stuff they sold in there. Uh, this that's the same little place that has the tractor supply in it. But so you saying runnings is good. Okay, I'm gonna check runnings out. I'm gonna go in there and check it out because in that little town, there's a country max, a, tra a tractor supply, and a runnings. So they all right in the same vicinity by each other. So I could hit them all and check them all out. Glory K. I feed the squirrels along with the birds. Okay. That's good if you find that helps you. I don't feed them because I don't want them multiplying. They multiply and have babies like rabbits, and you'll have an army. Um, Betsy, Glory, we will pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, I, I was thinking, I don't even want to say anything bad about them, but oh no, they're not going to get fed over here. Uh-uh. They are terrible. Terrible. That squirrel, I was up in the, uh, the reason, oh, I had forgot this part of the story. The reason I went out there, I wasn't just going out inspecting. I was washing the dishes, looking out there. And I saw the squirrel hop up on my pot with my uh, apple tree, hop up on it. And it had tool in that pot. And he hopped up on the, like the rim. And so I started yelling and, and, and it wasn't moving. He turned his back, had his back turned and was just focusing on that. And must have been so focused on that. It didn't realize I was coming outside because when I saw it, I started heading outside. I grabbed me some and I started heading outside. And by the time I got out there, it ran over to the woods, but but they bowled. It ran to the woods, but it wasn't 
just running and just going torn totally away. It ran to the woods and turned around and looked at me. But I thought to myself, now it was getting ready to do the same thing to that apple tree roots that it had done to the um, hazelnut tree roots. But I caught him in the act. And that's what made me start walking around and looking at all the trees and found what it had done to the hazelnut. So the one thing that stops that squirrel, when I put them rat traps in there, they got sense enough. They don't, I'm not putting it in there to try to kill them. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to deter you and let you know this is not where you're going to eat at. But if you are feeding squirrels, God bless you. Because I see these squirrels having babies left and right. How many potatoes would you plant in a 10 gallon growing bag? Uh, 10 gallon. I don't know, but I have a 15, I have 15 and 25 gallon grow bag. In my 15, I would put no more than four. I think if it was 10, I might put, I put, let's see, in the five gallon, I put in that first video, I think I put two potatoes in the five gallon. So, you can kind of figure that out. I put I put two in the five gallon, and I, if you see that video of mine, you see the harvest I got. Uh, and in the fifteen gallon, I put no more than four. I think I had four in the fifteen gallon, so I would say three. Because you put you some good fertilizer, you I mean you got good amended, good uh, nutritious soil in there. Uh, and when I'm saying fertilizer, I mean natural stuff like weeds, fertilizer and stuff that you can do your soil. Um, you talking about fish emulsion, different things. And the organic stuff, the organic stuff like your, your peat moss and your bone meal, your cow manure or your rabbit manure or whatever you use in chicken manure, whatever you use it. And you should do pretty good if you take care of them good. Uh, Brandy Keith. Oh, hi. How are you? That's the one who asked me, how many potatoes would you put in a 10-gallon? Okay, so I answered that one. And then Betsy... Okay, she's she's giving her opinion on that. Okay. Brandy Keith, thank you. I have a soul. I have cow pastures near me. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's important. Those potatoes are in good, nutritious, organic material in their soil you'll get a better result from doing that. And I would say it's better to put less potatoes than too many, because if you put too many, you might have poor results. You know, I'm just telling you what I do that has been successful for me. If, uh, Betsy, if potatoes are determinate, you can plant in layers in the pot. Yep, a lot of people go by the uh, determinate or indeterminate. Some potatoes don't even tell you if they determinate or indeterminate. And if you Google them, some of them you can't even find. I don't know why this information is not out there readily for people to get. Some of them you can find out that people know about, but some of them you can't. But my potatoes, when I put them in the grow bag, I do it simple. I don't don't worry about if they determine or indeterminate. 
Uh, I don't just, you know, put it at this level and pile and dirt on top of it after it comes up and put a little more. And a little, I don't do none of that. I put them potatoes in there with soil in there and I bury that stuff in some good, healthy, nutritious soil. And then they come up and I get a good harvest. So um, you can do it either way. If you want to do that uh, a way where you, you put in it, let it grow up and put some soil on and grow up and put some soil on and keep doing that, depending on if it's determinate or indeterminate. But I just put it all in there and let her go. Betsy, if potatoes are determinate, you can plant in layers. Okay, she said, uh, uh, what else? Betsy, ask owner of cows for permission to pick up patties for your compost pile. Yes, and you know what? You better make sure you let that comp that that uh, patties age. Do not put any that of uh, hot manure will burn your stuff up because in your cow, if you put that on your uh, your compost, uh, that's a good place. But I wouldn't want to have that close to my house because that's gonna smell. Most people, you know, if you do the compost pile correctly, they're not going to smell. But most people is not going to get that down and do it, you know, where it don't smell. So um, just make sure you don't put that on there and burn your stuff, okay? So is there any more questions that anybody have for me or a statement that you want to make regarding something that we talked about or something that you want to say? Okay, I'm just looking to see if I missed any. I hope I didn't miss anybody's question. Um, oh, yeah, that's right, you and you did say you have cows, horses, and goats. You, I thought that was you that said that last time. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. All right, I'm just checking. All right, so I think that um, we uh, looks like we in good shape on the questions. I don't see any anything that uh, I missed. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's Betsy saying, Miss Cynthia, some people raise rabbits just for the manure. Yes, that's absolutely right. Because if I get them, that's probably what I'm going to do at first. I want to have the option, though. If I need to have them for food, then I could do it. Because when you really need to have something and we're in a crisis, maybe you won't be able to get that thing. So you kind of got to be ready for anything. Okay, Betsy, 50 years of gardening and first year of healing potatoes are determinate and indeterminate. Potatoes grow pretty much anywhere, if even somewhat reasonable conditions. Yes. Um, Brandy Keith, I'm definitely subscribing tonight. Very good content and explanations. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and everybody, just keep it in mind when I was talking earlier about uh, joining the channel, think about that. If you watch my videos, you following me and you like the substance, the things that's going on on here, you know, consider that because as times get hard here, 
and things are continually rising, uh, it makes it very hard for us YouTubers to maintain it. And so uh, just keep that in mind, you guys. And you know, that's one thing about me. I love what I'm doing. I'm here. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to share from my experience what I know about gardening. And I've been doing that over 20 years. And I say 20 plus years. Okay. And I and that's that's on the the low side. Okay. So uh, you know, I'm glad to be here helping people. And I'm glad to be growing food. And not only that, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Okay. So you guys, thank you all for coming and joining the chat. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and come back and see me next time. I go and I post when I'm going to go live on my community posts. So you'll see it on there because I don't do it like every Tuesday or every Thursday or whatever, because I'm the chief cook and bottle washer. I'm, I'm the whole shebang. And I got a little over an acre of land and a big responsibility. So I do it as much as possible because I like making contact with you guys. I love it. And for all you people who come and see me, who, who support me. And when I do a live, you hear from me and you hear sharing and jumping in the chat and saying what you need to say to help others. And if you somebody that just coming in and checking out the replay, thank you so much. And if you somebody that's just sitting and watching, thank you for watching. Okay. So I thank you guys so much. Let me see. I saw somebody saying something. Betsy, Miss Cynthia, how are we going to protect our veg if we have and others don't? Oh, that's a that's a that's a that's a big thing there. That's that's for real, okay? And not only your vegetables, yourself, your house, and everything. So that's a conversation for another day. And I don't know that I want to get deep into that conversation because you can get uh, frowned upon saying certain things here. Uh, so I don't want to go too deep into it, but you have to protect everything. You know, everything, because they could get to that point. It could get to that point. So you do the best you can and try to make it because some have prepared and some have not. And that's a fact. So, like I said last time, I prep a little, but I'm not a crazy prepper. But I said the writing is on the wall. People can believe it or not. And sometimes, see, what happened, I, I think it makes it tough for people now because when things were more affordable and I think people should have been doing stuff and being prepared and they didn't. And now that the prices are so high that you just making ends meet it's hard to to try to catch up on that now so uh the best thing somebody can do is grow your own food you can do that you can grow your own food because people are growing food in the house you know people are growing with these hydroponics and all these other things start getting that stuff now start getting it now so you can be able to have what you need when push come to shove because even if you don't have a lot of something. You'll have some nutritious food that you can eat when times are hard. You know? So, oh, Elwanda, thank you so much. Betsy. All right, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next time. I'll see you all the next time, okay? Bye-bye.